Well, here we are. We've made it to HTML forms. This is incredibly important for anybody who wants to be a programmer and wants to use web technologies. Oh, HTML form is the way that you can collect information off of a human being who is going to fill out a form on a laptop, desktop, tablet, smartphone. This is our input mechanism for everything you're going to do. If I could figure out a way to get us here faster, I would. But as you can see, we have the notion of multiple tags that do different things. Some of these tags nest inside of other tags. And even here, we have one tag named input. And it has the ID attribute and the type attribute. And the way you use it is somewhat different depending on whether you specify an input type of button or an input type of text. So multiple tags, tags nest inside of other tags, and some tags have some very important attributes like the for attribute of the label tag. So with all of that being said, the best way to learn about HTML forms is to get your hands dirty, get into Visual Studio Code, type some things out, and if you do that, you're quickly going to discover the basics of HTML forms. So let's get started. Here we are in VS Code. I'm going to close work for, make a copy of it, and I'm going to right mouse click down here at the bottom and choose paste and rename this as work five. All right. And I'm going to get rid of my style tag from the prior lesson. My first HTML form. And get rid of the unordered list from the prior lesson. And I'm going to change the title to my first HTML form. Like I said in the intro, HTML forms are super important for programmers because without them, we can't collect information off of people. We have a variety of tags, and the subset of tags I'm sharing with you is a small subset of what you can do with an HTML form. But this is a great place to start. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And for starters, I'm going to say when I have a form, all of my input elements, that is to say the, the boxes I would check or the boxes I would type into or the things I would click on or the buttons I would click on, they all need to be inside of a form. There you go. I made my form tag. All of the contents of the form go inside of the form. This form tag, at first glance, doesn't seem to be doing much, but trust me, it's to your advantage to collect like things together inside of a tag. And since we are creating a form, let's put all of the form elements inside the tag known as form. All right, let's uh, specify some input. Um, this form is going to ask the important question, what is your favorite color. Okay. What is your favorite color? So what I just typed there is a question and I'm expecting that there will be a, a box that goes along with that. That box is going to hold my input. So to be really, really precise, this would be the label 
that accompanies some box where I could put some input in. Let me also say that in a moment, I'm going to create a button. The form that we're making right now does not go anywhere. It does not do anything. We are strictly focusing on creating the HTML, creating the appearance of a form and the uh, scope of information about, okay, how do I process that information? How do I change that user input or do some calculation? For that, I need at least JavaScript. And that's outside the scope of what we're doing here. We're just focusing in on HTML and HTML essentials. So uh, I'm going to follow this question with an input box or an input tag, I should say. And looking at my notes that I presented to you just a moment ago, I see that every tag should have an ID. Why is that? Well, because it's going to be very important for me to uniquely identify each piece of data that I will ask the user for. And I'm simply going to call this color. I also need to specify a type. Type equals text. That is to say, I am making a text box. All right, let me click save and preview this in my default browser and see what I have. My first HTML form, what is your favorite color? And here I could type in blue, right? Notice I don't have a button or anything to click on, but this is a start. Now, I have done something wrong. And what I have done wrong is this. I have relied on my own human intelligence to connect this question with this box. That is, when I open this up in the browser, I looked at this and I said, oh, this text is next to this box. Therefore, these things must go together. As it turns out, screen readers and web crawlers and other forms of automation do not have the same kind of intelligence that human beings do. So it's not obvious to the screen reader that this goes with this. Likewise, if I were to open this in the default browser and I were to click over here, there's nothing that like connects it to this box, right? And you can imagine that that might be handy if, uh, if I was maybe doing this on a phone or if I was having trouble selecting this for some reason, it'd be nice if I could click on this text and, and that the browser would just somehow know that this goes with this. Well, to get that sort of effect, we need to put a tag around this text because this text is a label for this input. So the name of the tag that I want is the label tag. And what I want to go inside the label is the text that goes with that label. I'm going to just slide this over a little bit, make my uh, screen just a little bit bigger so you can see all of that on one line. The line breaks and the extra spaces really don't matter. But they do make it easier for me to read and talk about. So there we go. I put the label tag around what is your favorite color. But I'm still not done because I'm still relying on my own human intelligence to say that this goes with this simply because they're next to each other. A computer, a program has no concept of the idea of next to, right? And even though I use this word here and this word there, again, that also is a sort of leap of intellect to recognize that these things go together. So to make it abundantly clear to the browser, to the screen reader, and to the web crawler that 
this goes with this. I need to add a attribute to label and call it four. And what do you suppose I put in there? What is this label for? It is for this input ID, but there might be multiple input IDs on my form. It is for an input ID of type text, but there might be multiple input IDs of type text. What will uniquely identify this one tag? The ID, of course. So when I do that, the browser, the screen reader, and the web crawler can all recognize that this text is a label for this input box. And you can see the outcome of that right away by simply clicking on the text. Now that I, when I click here, notice that the corresponding input box is automatically selected, automatically ready to receive input. So let me just refresh this one more time. Nothing there. I click on this text uh, and I can type in purple. Very nice. How about a button? All right. I'm going to put in another input tag. It will have an ID and uh, I will call it uh, my button. Maybe not the best ID in the world, but in the absence of anything else, that'll do. All right, so I specified uh, the ID. I'm going to specify the type. Equal to button. And I'm almost there. I am almost there. All right, let's see what that looks like. I preview that in my browser, you can see that, oh, well, that's something, but it's not quite right. I would like there to be something inside of that button. Like maybe it should say go or save or commit or continue or something like that. All right, so to do that, I need to give my input tag a value and I will call my value uh, continue. Okay. Now when I click on my button I can check its value if I needed to and the value is going to determine what goes inside of that button. Quick, quick, is, in, is label a self-closing tag? No, it is not, because it has an opener and a closer. Is input a self-closing tag? Yes, it is, because it starts, and notice that, there, that this is not valid HTML, All right? To be completely, I'm type, you can see that um, VS Code is having a hard time letting me do it. This is not correct. There is no closing input tag, because input is a, self-closing tag. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to open that in my default browser and now I have a continue button. Doesn't do anything, but we weren't trying to make it do anything, remember? Um, I would like the button to be below this. How can I move the button below this? Well, to do that, you would put in a break. I want it to be more below this, okay? How about two breaks? Is that so bad? Let's right click on this, open in default browser. There we go. My first HTML form, what is your favorite color? Test, continue. Now this doesn't do anything yet, and that's understood. But if you can do this and, the big thing that I want you to know is that you need to use the label tag. Many, many, many new developers, new programmers forget to use the label tag and they rely on the intelligence of the human user to just kind of know what goes with what. 
but that's wrong because you need to design for that user. You also need to design for that user's uh, screen reader and for that user's web crawler and for uh, uh, any variety of new devices that might come into existence because we've seen, you know, you know, over the years we've seen desktops give way to laptops, give way to tablets, give way to smartphones. And, you know, what's next? You know, smart watches, smart watches are right there. Who knows what's next? The proper use of the label tag helps ensure that your HTML will work on all of those platforms. Um, I'm going to add in one more tag here. And here it comes. It's the select tag. And I'm going to give the select tag, I could give it an ID. I suppose I should. And um, I'm going to put in a ID of age. And I suppose a question should go with this select tag as well. How about how old are you? Question mark. And this, of course, goes with this. So this had better be a label. And what's this label for? It's for age. Okay. Now the select tag all by itself doesn't do much for me. If I were to preview this, you can see that uh, oh, that's something's wrong there. There's nothing inside of my select tag. Um, to get my desired outcome here, I need to specify a tag inside of a tag. The tag I'm looking for is called the option. And the option uh, would be something like young, And then I want another option. Oops. Middle aged and old. Okay. Save that. So option all by itself is worthless. Select all by itself is pretty worthless. Select and option together though, with the options nested inside of the select tag gives me this very nice effect here on my page. And you say, oh, professor, I would like there to be a, a break. I would like there to be a break underneath underneath the uh, after I would like the continue button to be down here. Well, it's the same answer, same answer as it was before. I'm going to put some line breaks in. In fact, I'm just going to go right ahead and put in two. Okay, there are other better ways of putting in the line breaks, but we haven't learned them yet, right? So this, this is, but this is pretty good. My first HTML form, what's your favorite color? Uh, red, and I am, I'll say that I'm old. That makes you feel any better. And then I click continue and it doesn't do anything and that's okay. But take a good look at that. If you can follow that, you are in great shape, right? Because you can identify the regular tags, the self-closing tags, you know what the HTML attributes are, you know ID and for, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on here. But once you know these uh, foundational ideas that we've been developing for uh, quite a few videos now, you, you, this, is, this is very, very easy. So I appreciate your time and attention here. Uh, we are just about there. So uh, let me jump back over to my slides and we're going to wrap up this entire chapter. Good job, everybody.